Hello everyone and welcome to Agma Bond Cement Academy webinar. And today we are going to speak about Agma Bond Cement protocol together with the ORAID wound dressing. My name is Dr. Amos Yav, and first I would like to thank Dr. David Baranes who shared with us his cases, his wonderful cases. And of course, I would like to give a big thanks to Mr. Scott Kim from Korea and his company, of course, who bring us this wonderful innovation. So, what is OAID? OAID is a mucous adhesive dressing, which comes in two sizes, 25 on 15 millimeters, which is mostly we use it in most of our cases, and 50 on 15 millimeter, which we use it for uh, large periodontal surgeries instead of COVAC. <clears throat> the dressing system comprising of a mucous adhesive layer and a protective layer, and actually, as you can see, the band is coming on a transparent layer. So the inner layer is the mucous adhesive layer and the outer layer is the protective layer. The adhesive layer mostly is made from povidone, hydroxyethyl cellulose, polyethylene glycol, and the outer layer from ethylene cellulose. The outer layer is a water insoluble polymer and actually it's helped to protect the area. It's protect against virus, bacteria, saliva, food, etc. And the inner layer is a water-soluble polymer, which actually reacts with water, blood, and saliva, and change into a gel state, which gives him a strong adhesion, a property, together with the mucosa. And of course, the transparent layer is the release liner, which the uh, OI8 can uh, stick to it when we get it from the company. So what are the features and the benefits? First, it can protect the wound from food, bacteria, cigarettes, smoke, and uh, other things. It helps in hemostasis. It protects the sutures. Actually, we are using it almost in each one of our surgery. It's not expensive. So after every surgery, we're using it. It gives us a wonderful protection. Later on, you're going to see it. It gives a strong adhesion because it's containing hydrophilic uh, polymer. And it's protect the growth factor and exudate. It's protect as well at the, <clears throat> the blood clot and the fibre formation, reduce pain and sensitivity, and it's easy to manipulate. It's easy to cut it exactly to the same to the size and the shape that we want. So let's see this uh, video how we use it with Ogmaton cements for socket grafting. So here we have a case that we need to extract the tooth. After removal of the tooth, we perform complete debridement and then we trim the shape that we need. We can take the paper of our uh, sutures, which is sterile, and we trim it to the desired size and shape. And later on, this is going to be our model so you see, we check, we see that it's exactly what we want. Immediately after, we activate the bond appetite. We push the shaft slowly until the first piston reaches the blue line. Now, the bond appetite cement is ready. We eject it into the site. Take a dry gauze, press strongly with a finger. It's very important to press strongly. And then immediately, we add additional compaction with a periosteal elevator. Each time is about three seconds, not more. We add a little bit more, press again, take a dry, uh, take a periosteal elevator, add additional compaction. It is very important. Material that will not be compacted will not give you the same result. Now we remove the excess, and before placing the orate, we clean the area with a dry gauze and then with a moistened gauze. Now we cut the orate accordingly. and we detach it from the liner. Now we place it on the gun and we press. So it stick immediately, that's just fantastic. 
What we need to do, we need to secure it in place. Therefore, we take a suture, we go from the medial side to the distal, underneath the core uh, band, and we go to the lingual side, from one side to the other, and make a cross suturing. That's all. It's very important to suture the oraid. Now, there is one thing that I want to stress. <clears throat> Normally, if we're using oraid without securing it by suture, after a few hours, it will fail. In all of the cases in which we are doing socket grafting and we have the material exposed, like here, it's about 13, 14 millimeters, we cannot leave it exposed. We must protect it. In the past, we use a lot of uh, collagen sponge. However, the oraid it's much, much, much more easier, faster, and it gives us even much better protection. So this is a very good innovation that comes to help us. So again, I'm going to repeat about how we suture it. After that, we put the oraid and it stick to the mucosa. We're going down into the mucosa from one side with our needle, from the mesial side to the distal side. And then we go mesially to the lingual aspect and go from the mesial to the distal and come back mesially and make our first knot. That's all. It's very, very simple. And that's how we suture it. We don't need to suture the oraid like we did with the collagen sponge. We don't need to go with the needle through it. Inverse, we don't do it. We just go above it and we tight it in order that the oraid will not fall down. <clears throat> So let's see some clinical cases. This case, for example, is a fracture root. We extract it. One thing is very important. This is in the aesthetic zone, so we need to keep the papilla. So when the procedure is not invasive, as well, if we have a material that enables us to grow soft tissue above its surface, so we don't need to borrow soft tissue, then we preserve perfectly the papilla, and that's something that you're going to see. So the papilla is here. Now we need to remove the remnants of the root and we inject the bond apatite cement inside. It's very important to take a dry gauze, first press with a finger, then with a periostal elevator. The material must be very well compacted. And it's slightly, we slightly overfill as you can see it here. Now the material is acroscopic, so the blood is coming immediately. Uh, into the material. Now, what we did at that time, it was at the beginning when we started to work with the oraid, we were not sure that it will work properly as we expected to work. So at that time, we still use the collagen sponge. Nowadays, we don't use it at all. There is no reason, unless you know there are countries that they don't have the oraid. But where we have the oraid, we definitely don't need to use the collagen sponge, but at that time we use it. So you know that the collagen sponge, we need to secure it very well. We go through the sponge, we go buccally and we go palatinally and we secure it. And above it, we just place the oraid. Nowadays, again, we don't use a collagen sponge. We just use the oraid. You're going to see it later in uh, the other cases. And as you can see, it sticks very nicely to the mucosa. Here, in this case, because we use a provisional Maryland bridge that will keep the oraid in place, so we didn't need to suture. Otherwise, we need to secure it by sutures. This is the provisional Maryland bridge. And as you can see, we bond it to the tooth and it keeps the oraid in place. So let's see what's happened. That is in day one. That's after seven days. We can see the resorption of the oraid, but it's still in place. And by the way, I want you to look at the color of the soft tissue when it's coming in contact with the oraid. It's perfectly pink. There is absolutely no inflammatory reaction or any uh, sensitization between the oraid and the soft tissue. That's, that's just amazing to see it. Now, uh, something is very important, not to tell the patient to make mouse rinse with salt water, because if you will use salt water, the polymer will resolve very quickly. So you can use clothes gluconate or other uh, mouse rinse, but not salt water. Let's see 
What's happened after three months? After three months, we have a perfect healing, soft tissue healing. And we can see that the papilla is perfectly in place. And the only thing that bothers the papilla is maybe here the, the bonding of, uh, of the Mary language. But that's, some, that's something that can be corrected very, very easily. Take a look here. A beautiful soft tissue proliferation and the papilla are perfectly in place when we remove the Maryland bridge. That is a keratinized uh, tissue. So it was a very simple procedure, but keep a very high standard of uh, treatment in the aesthetic zone. And of course, it's not invasive to the patient. So it's just wonderful. And on the apatite, we know that it's transformed into the patient on bone, especially when it's so nice protected. So that's the bone that we got. And of course, in this stage, we can place an implant. And again, we place the aura aid because we like to protect the site after every surgery that we do. It gives us a lot of benefits. Okay. And that's how it looks with the provisional. That is the radiographic appearance. And that's with the final result. I think it's a wonderful result and wonderful soft tissue healing we have here. So let's see this video now when we already know that there is no need for collagen sponge here we can have it we see the fistula and we need to extract those two now this is the aesthetic zone it has a high smile line so actually we need to be very careful on the papilla but when we have a material that enables us to grow soft tissue instead of borrow them from somewhere else you're going to see the result and how easy we can manage the case without any fear and there is no buckle plate here okay so we take the bond appetite we activate it we inject it into the site and it's very important if we don't have a buckle plate to compact well the material all the way down in order to uh, to feel the buckle missing now we do it by a collagen by a goes first pressing with the finger and then you can see we push it down with the elevator periostal elevator on it goes and we slightly overfill <clears throat> it's very friendly maneuver now we fill the other one press again with the finger for three seconds not more and then take a dry uh, uh, take a periostal elevator on the dry bones and add additional compaction for two or three seconds that's very important. <coughs> we remove access. Press again. Now, before placing the orate, we need to clean the mucosa. We take a dry gauze and remove the access of the cement from the site. And then take a moistened gauze, not too much wet, moistened gauze, and go on the, on the gingiva. And that will give a perfect addition. Now we suture the papilla in order to guide the tissue. And now the only thing that we do, we take the aura aid and we protect the area. Simple as that. See, it stick to the mucosa very nicely. It stay, it does not move. And now, of course, we need to protect it that it will not fail after a few hours. So we perform some sutures. You remember the protocol. We're going from the mesial side to the distal. On the top of the aura aid, we're going to the palatal side to the mesial going into the soft tissue to the distal, coming back to the mesial, make our first knot. And here we did two suture like this, two cross suturing. Now we can be sure that the aura aid will protect our wound. And don't forget, everything here was open. So let's see what happened. That's how it looks seven days post-op. That's how it looked three months post-op. You can see that the papilla is perfectly in place. And when we take down the Maryland, you can see that everything is a wonderful keratinized uh, tissue. <clears throat> 
Now we can do it also when we need to reconstruct the ridge after many extractions. So let's see how we do it here, how simple it is. We extract the tooth. If we can place implant and we have primary stability, of course, we can do it simultaneously. Now we need to place the bond appetite in order to augment the, the crest. So something that we need to remember, we don't need to push the bond appetite between the implant and the bony walls. The blood clot will do it. We just eject it on top. We can eject it on the buccal aspect, press strongly first with our finger on the gauze and then periostal elevator on the gauze. And we are ready to close. Now, the benefits of the bond appetite that all of the surgical procedures are not invasive because we don't want to have tension free inverse. We want to have the flap with tension. So actually, we don't do any periostal releasing incision or releasing in the connective tissue in order to gain tension free. This is actually contraindicated. We just make a minimal flap reflection, stretch it. And even if it will not be closed perfectly, there is absolutely no reason to, do, to be scared because soft tissue know how to proliferate above the graft, especially when we have the aura that give us a wonderful protection above that the material will not wash out normally. Bond appetite can be left three millimeter without, exposed three millimeter without any problem. However, here, because we have the protection, so it can be a little bit even more with no fear. You can see in socket, sometimes we leave it 10, 14 millimeters, okay? But we stretch the soft tissue, okay? We suture it nicely and we protect it with the aura aid and it's very, very easy and very nice to work with it because it stick immediately to the soft tissue. It's adhered to the soft tissue. And then, of course, we need to secure it by suture, as we do always. We go from one side to the other, to the other side, to the other side, and one knot. And you see two like that are sufficient for such a large area. <clears throat> and we know that the O8 band will never fall down. And that's how it looks already seven days post-op. Everything was bridged by a new soft tissue that proliferated into the area. And we don't need to be afraid because bond appetite and bond cement, and, uh, bond cement from biphysical tube sulfate uh, are bacteriostatic. So exposure never lead to contamination. Of course, if you put it in an infected, acute infected site, it might contaminate. But exposure, we did thousands of cases and we didn't add even one case of uh, uh, infection due to exposure. So this is a huge benefit for us. And especially that we don't need to borrow soft tissue. And when we do a flap with tension also, the flap is not connected to the muscles movement, you know, because when we uh, create a tension flip, a tension free flap, and we make a periostal releasing in chisel, and the flap is very uh, large. So actually every movement of the muscles will move our flap. But here, simple suture are enough because the flap is not connected to the muscle, soft tissue, we proliferate, so we don't need to borrow soft tissue. And let's see what happened after three months. Perfect, perfect soft tissue healing. And everything is attached and keratinized one. That's just wonderful. And of course, the aura gave us a wonderful protection until soft tissue uh, proliferated and breached the gap. And of course, it gave a good protection to the bone to be formed. <clears throat> Another case, here we needed to extract these tooth. So... You can see the papilla here, and again, the same protocol, we inject the bond appetite, press strongly first with the dry gauze and finger, and then with the periostal elevator, slightly overfill, and then we take the orate. After that, we trim it to the size, the size that we want. It stick <coughs> to the mucosa, and then we secure it by suture exactly according to the protocols. Of course, we say to the patient to try not to play with it too much, or not at all if you can, and of course not to make mouse rinse with salt water. And that's how it looks three months post-op. The papilla is perfectly in place, the bone perfectly formed because it was very well protected, and that's the soft tissue appearance. I think this is wonderful. And again, I think I need to thank Mr. Scott Kim and his company for bringing us such a wonderful innovation. And this innovation has an amazing synergy with Alma Bond Cement. That's why we so encourage you to use them together.
And this is the bone. We know the bond appetite transform completely into the patient on bone. So this is a wonderful result here and there. We can find some particles of the HA that slow down the resorption, but they are less than 10% and they are in the process of resorption. That's why they look like bubbles. Here we can see it in the radiography and this is the um, clinical appearance with the abutment. Another case, we need to extract the molar. Now you can see we extracted it. We don't need even to reflect the flag in such cases, okay? But we will have a big gap here that will be breached by the bond appetite, but will be protected with the oraid. So we inject the material, simple as we show. Before applying the oraid, we take a dry gauze, clean those remnants of the cement from the site, and then we take a gauze, moist it with saline, and then moist all of the area with, uh, with the gauze. This is very important. In that way, you will have a perfect division of the oraid. And here, the oraid is uh, bonded to the mucosa. And of course, as always, we need to secure it. So we secure it with the suture, one side to the other, to the other side. And sometimes if we want to be more sure, we can add another suture here. It's very, very, very simple. <clears throat> That's how it looks seven days post-op. See the reaction of the soft tissue, wonderful. Absolutely no inflammatory reaction and no irritation. And then normally we don't need to take the orate until it's completely resolved. But here, because we saw that everything is already breached, the soft tissue was proliferated here. So we decided to take it out. Now you can see how it looks after suture removals. That's how it looks 14 days post-op. And that's three months post-op. That's amazing healing. Everything is with keratinized uh, uh, gingiva. I want you to remember, you remember what big gap was here. You can see that with the whole the healing is very, very fast. It's even much faster than with collagen sponge. So I never saw such faster healing as I saw with uh, the, the OA. So let's see it here, how much we had. You see, it's about 12 millimeter or something like that. Okay. And everything was exposed. Seven days post-op, everything was breached. Wonderful healing. Just wonderful healing. And of course, bond appetite, it's not new to us that it's turned into the patient on bond. When we open, we find the patient on bond that was very well protected during the healing phase. Three months post-op, of course, we can play the implant. Another case, here we have a fistula and we have a fractured root. So the tooth were extracted. There was no need to reflect the flap. If we can clean it nicely, we inject the bond appetite press strongly with a finger on a gauze and then with a periostal elevator, we push the material to fill the missing of the buccal plate. So it's very important that the material will be well compacted. Material that will not be well compacted in the, in the cervical zone will, uh, will, uh, ex uh, will generate discomfort to the patient after a few days and you will not have the same results. So the material must be very well compacted, especially in the cervical zone. If you don't have a buccal plate, yes, you need to push it down in order to feel the defect of the buccal plate. That's very important. If you have four body wall, you don't need to push it into the apex, just inject it, but it's very important that it will be well condensed in the cervical zone. We do it simply, we place a dry gauze, Above it, press with the finger for three seconds. Then we take a periostal elevator, add additional compaction for two, three seconds, and that's all. Remove access and protect it with the oraid. <clears throat> you see, before protection with the oraid, we clean the area with the dry gauze, then with the moistened gauze. And you see, all of this gap will be breached in one week, even less. So that's amazing. Very important to suture the oraid. And we don't need to go through the oraid with the suture like we did with the collagen sponge. Here we just place above, but we tight our uh, sutures in order that the oraid will not move. Seven day post-op, you remember what we have here? All of that's what opened. Now it's completely clean and it's in the process of maturation. Three months post-op, 
you can see beautiful soft tissue healing and of course we know that bone appetite transform into the patient on bone and when we open it it's just the patient on bone here and there we file the bubbles of the ha which are less than 10 percent and they are in the process of resolving so this is a wonderful result another case in this case again extraction bond appetite slightly overfill clean the area before using the oral aid first with a dry gauze and then with a moisted one place the oral aid it sticks very nicely so it does not move it's very easy to work with it and then secure it by sutures above it that's how it looks from closer look seven day post-op you remember i'm going back to show you this how much everything here from here to here it was opening i think it's about 12 millimeters something like that now after seven days everything was breached from here to here soft tissue proliferation take place very very quickly and in three months that's perfect just just perfect and of course we are not surprised to see the results that we have the patient on bone in the area. And we can place the implant in the patient on bone. Now, all aid can be used for many other different applications. Actually, after each one of our surgery, we can use it. It's not expensive, so it's affordable, it's affordable for everyone, every one of our patients, every case that we are using surgery. We can use it in periodontal surgery. Again, you can place it without suture, but that will fall after a few hours. So if you want a better protection for a longer time, then I recommend to suture. If not, definitely you can leave it like that. We can use it also when we have a free connective tissue graft. I recommend before placing the OVA8, placing a 3D bond here by Fesiculture Sulfate Pure One on that to place the OVA8 and yes, to secure it by suture. That will give you wonderful healing and zero pain to your patient. That's something very, very important. And of course, we can use it uh, on any kind of surgery that we are doing. We just protect the suture. We can do it, uh, we can use it as well uh, when we have ulcers and other stomachitis uh, situation. So with that, my presentation come to end. And again, I would like to thank Dr. Baranes for sharing with us these wonderful cases. And of course, I would like to thank as well Mr. Scott Kim from Korea and his company for bringing us such a wonderful, wonderful uh, solution for, uh, or tool to be used in the augmentation in the surgical uh, field. Thank you very much all.